Welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today I am joined by my friend Cesar Injaolu, all the way in Turkey at the Istanbul Agop factory. Cesar, how are you? I'm good, man. Thank you. It's great to be here. Awesome. Yeah, this is really cool. We're, we're going to be talking today about the full history of Istanbul Agop symbols, um, which I don't know a lot about. I know it goes way back, and there's a lot of uh, obviously rich symbol heritage in Turkey. So I'm excited to um, to learn this. And, and I got to give a big thank you to our, our mutual friend, Afonso Pene in Brazil, who, yeah. who set us up from uh, Delta Percussion, who is just a great friend of the show. So he, he's how I uh, how I met you. Yeah, yeah, he's a good guy. Uh, I know him uh, from the industry. Yes. Thanks to him. Yes. And now we're here. So, um, yeah. Awesome. And yeah, we got a big time difference. It's 9 a.m., 9.20 a.m. where I am, and it's 5.15 p.m. where you are. So uh, right. on, on that note, because you want to go home, <laughs> why don't we <laughs> why don't we start, uh, start rocking here? And per usual with the show, why don't you go back and just take us to the beginning of the company and run us through um, the history of the company? Oh, definitely. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, Bart, to give us this opportunity to be on your uh, podcast page. Thank you. It's a great honor. Um, I want to start with uh, our founder, Mr. Agop Tomorjuk. You know, in the Istanbul Agop brand name, you see this Agop name. He is the founder of uh, Istanbul Symbols back then and then changed to the Istanbul Agop. Our founder, Agop Tomurcuk is his surname, hmm. was born in Istanbul, Turkey in 1941. And uh, as he was growing up in a place called Samatya neighborhood of Istanbul, he followed in the footsteps of his older brothers, Oksent and Garbis, by beginning to work as an apprentice symbolsmith at the age of nine at the only symbol factory in Turkey. It was the old K factory. Yeah. Because back then, the Zidjian family had already moved to States, but there was only the old K factory. And Agop had started there at nine, uh, at, at the age of nine to work there, like just giving, some, giving water to the workers, you know, carrying stuff all day. So here he learned and later helped to refine every aspect of the symbol making process, becoming a master at every process and eventually becoming the chief symbol smith at this factory until the company ceased production of the of making symbols uh, in Turkey in 1977 mm. so he was feeling like a fish out of water uh, when the company when the factory was closed down and after a little over a year spent working various odd jobs he became to be determined to continue the Turkish tradition of handmade symbols on his own because it was the only thing he knew back then and he wanted to continue to do it. With a little bit of asking around, he was able to locate and buy up uh, much of the equipment and tools he used at his previous company and he rented a sim small workshop uh, in a place called Bakırköy area of Istanbul. He began to experiment and produce some symbols with the help of his dear wife, uh, Uskui Tomurcuk. So uh, after that, uh, in 1980, Agop officially founded his company with the name of Istanbul Symbols. So thinking about this, it's just really interesting how in that, in that, uh, in that area, obviously Zildjian mm -hmm. being so very, very old, um, and yeah. I can direct people, there's a Zildjian episode, but... Um, about how I know they'd already moved to America, like you said, and then I believe it was the the cousins of the Zildjian family were still operating the K factory. Uh -huh. So, so it all stems from that. So that that's such a great um, place to grow up, <laughs> working. Yeah. What a, what an awesome opportunity! I mean, that's so cool. Yeah, that that was the only school to learn how to make symbols. Yeah. And Agop was in that school, and he carried that uh, heritage. Yeah. After that. Cool. So so in 1980, that's it began he forms Istanbul symbols, not Istanbul yeah. Agop, it's Istanbul at that point. No. The first name was actually the first name was Zilciler. It means symbol makers. But because this name was very close to Zilcin, yep. And uh, he he of course decided to change it and he he called it Istanbul symbols. Cool. 
So uh, he made uh, symbols in this uh, workshop, and he was, you know, talking to the Turkish drummers uh, in Istanbul, and he was selling his symbols to the stores in uh, famous stores in Istanbul. And then uh, he had some connections in the states. Uh, he decided to send his symbols to the states for the first time. So in 1982, Agop sent the first symbol uh, symbols to the Nam Show. Wow! Uh, in Los Angeles, it it is the it is a time where Mel Lewis seen these symbols and he said something very very important and everybody still remembers today. He said they are back. <laughs> What he meant by this that the, the the handmade traditional handmade Turkish symbols were again in the market wow. because as we know uh, in the states uh, the traditional Turkish Uh, made symbols, hand hammered symbols. Uh, they didn't do it that way back then. Yeah. So again, because Agop continued to do this heritage, those kind of symbols were in the market again. Hmm. So it was the uh, it was the moment that Istanbul symbols started to be famous uh, in the world. Wow. So no one else was doing it at that point because obviously symbols were being Zildjian's were being made in America. Um, yeah, I guess in it would be eighty eighty two. Sabian was just being kind of formed after the separation of the the brothers. So and that's not made. I mean that's Canada. Um, that's Canada. So this is at this point the one of the only you know Turkish symbol brands that's actually reaching America, if not the only. And um, wow, that's really cool. Yeah, it's the only company because in Turkey there was no other symbol factory, symbol anybody who could make symbols. It was only only Agop. Got it. Yeah. Um, so in 1984, Agop's uh, eldest son uh, and now company co-president Sarkis Tomurcuk officially joined the company. There was a growing demand for the symbols, and it was difficult to even fill the orders. So he needed people. So he asked his uh, eldest son, and two years later, uh, in 1986, Agop's younger son, and now company co-president Arman Tomurcuk, officially joined the company, and they helped their fathers by uh, doing some hammering on the symbols or the lighting uh, on the symbols. They actually worked and made symbols with their father, and now they are running the company. Istanbul Agop company is run by Arman and Sarkis Tomerjan. Like today? So from, today it's run by yeah, them? Oh, today. Wow. Cool. Yeah, Agop's sons are running the company That's now. That's great. So from 1986 until 1996, Istanbul's symbols continued to grow considerably and gain the recognition and admiration of many of the greatest musicians, many of whom visited the factory from all parts of the world. During this era, Elvin Jones, Billy Hart, Tony Williams, Danny Gottlieb, Jack DeJohnette, Art Blakey, Cindy Blackman, and many others came to visit the, the factory. And these names actually were endorsed by Istanbul Symbols back then hmm. because they really wanted to play the uh, original Turkish handmade symbols. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. And, and as we yeah. know, having a roster of big, um, I guess in this case, Western musicians would be, uh, it's obviously that's how people see it. So that's, that's, that's really cool. And, and I mean, it's, those are some great jazz guys. So were they seen traditionally as like jazz symbols or would they be more all around, um, you know, were rock guys using them um, or were they specifically just jazz at that point, really? Yeah, that, that's the point, actually. Istanbul symbols were always known to make the best jazz symbols. And still people know that Istanbul symbols, Istanbul Agop symbols are doing the best jazz symbols. That's true. And this is the, the area that we are best at. But we just wanted to add something to this. That's why I'm going to explain in a bit, but that's why we are also making some uh, sort of symbols which are very, which have modern uh, Sounds and are made in the modern techn by the modern technologies because the sure. the world demands not only just symbols, you know. Yeah. So uh, we need some symbols that have modern sounds uh, to meet the needs of the other other drummers as well. 
yeah. other than the jazz drummers. Great. So uh, in 1992, uh, Arman completed his education in England and returned to Istanbul. Uh, in 1993, he attends the Music Master Trade Show in Germany, Frankfurt, and helped to expand the company's distribution to 30 countries worldwide. He's the younger son of okay. Jacob, uh, who, is, who is the co-president of the company now. Yeah. So uh, after Oxen's retirement, Sarkis became the chief symbolsmith in the company. And uh, unfortunately, after a tragic sea accident, uh, the company founder, Agop Tomorjuk, passed away in 1996. After their father's death, the two brothers quit the old factory where they had worked for 16 years and mm. formed Istanbul Ziljiler in 1997 and further distinguished themselves with the Istanbul Agop brand name and adopting a more progressive approach towards sounds and designs so, while so the staying company, true to the tradition. The company yeah. kind of split then. So then it was, there was yeah. is- Istanbul Agop and then there was Istanbul, how do you say it? Mehmet. Oh, Mehmet. Okay, that's where that yeah, happens. Yeah. That, so that's where yeah, that yeah. happens. So there was no real bad blood between the family. It was just, so the father, so Agop passed away, as you said. Yep. And then they decided we're going to switch gears and do a more progressive kind of um, uh, style, which is really similar to the other, you know, lineage of some some famous symbol companies that have split. I guess that's a common um, theme. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> Actually... <laughs> Actually, the, the Mehmet, uh, uh, this this person was partner of Agop because Agop, when he started to continue this business, he needed a partner with some financial help. So he was uh, Mehmet also was the co-president of that company, and when Agop passed away, he himself wanted to leave and open his own company with the Istanbul name. And uh, Istanbul name, actually, both sides had the right to use Istanbul name. So yeah. when Mehmet left, Agop's sons, two sons, decided to move with the name of Istanbul Agop. And they adopted more progressive approach towards sounds and designs, but also stayed true to the jazz tradition. Sure. Yeah, I was going to say, like, how does that work? Because it's, it's I mean, it's the same basic logo it's the same basic name minus the the um the agop and the mehmet so um yeah so that's cool i i was i've always kind of been curious about that so it's it's mm-hmm. just a different technique of making them is there um is there like bad blood between the the two companies like are you guys kind of like for lack of a better term like mortal enemies mm-hmm. or do you guys <laughs> no no Okay. Uh, first of all, there's no re- relationship as a family, uh, yep. being re- being relative, uh, and there's no bad blood. Let's say uh, we do- we don't have any business contact. Separate yep. companies, totally separate companies, and Istanbul Agop is the leading uh, symbol company from Turkey. When we talk about the production, manufacturing quantities and the product range and uh, worldwide coverage by distribution or artist roster. But there's no problem, just the name is common and by law, both parties can use the same logo. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, now, is there a, uh, is this something also, um, like the recipe and the like the formula is this something where it's it's very secret and like one person in the family knows it or is it more of a um like in the factory it's not quite like that like it's a little more open about how the process works well actually uh, Arman Sarkis two brothers and their mother still alive Uskui Tomurjuk they have the heritage from their their from Agop actually and they know all kind of uh, formula of course this is something that workers can understand and you know also they some of them know because the workers that work with us they work for many years you know yeah. we are working uh, even we have just a man who was there in the beginning with agop so wow. these people of course uh, learned from agop and then from the two brothers and they of course know part, some parts of uh, the sure. formulas and how to make symbols 
But of course, in the end, it's, let's say, the family secret. Yep. Uh, but not 100% of a secret, of course. I gotcha. Yeah. It's, okay, I just, it's, I, thought it's in the factory. <laughs> sometimes there's there's the discussion with other companies of like it's in a vault and one person knows it, and if that person dies, then it all goes away. But um, okay, so the two Istanbul's split. You said that was in the nineties. That was ninety. Ninety seven. Ninety seven. Okay. They split. Yeah. So where do we go from there? Okay, after this split, uh, two brothers, uh, you know, they wanted to be more progressive and they wanted to create some kind of more modern symbols uh, into the industry. So by 1998, they uh, created another symbol series called the Alchemy. Uh, they created it to expand uh, their sound beyond traditional jazz symbols and better to better suit the diverse range of more modern and higher volume music. Mm. The Alchemy series was the first symbol series which are which were made by polishing the symbol because all the symbols were actually in a, a traditional finish, natural finish. These symbols were heavier, um, louder and with a, tradi- with a with a polished brilliant uh, look gave the symbol a different look and also more open sound. Yeah. So this was the first time in the Turkish symbol making history. Because yeah, you traditionally think of them as being very dark, very yeah hand hammered. Right. So now you're looking more like a modern symbol at that point in time. Yes. Yeah. Th- this got more modern uh, players to, yeah. into the Istanbul group roster, artist Great. roster. And uh, when we come. To 2004 now, Istanbul Agop opened the first company-owned office outside of Istanbul in Los Angeles, California, USA, to further improve our relationship with artists and drummers and further expand the availability of our instruments. Because, you know, United States is the real arena Mm -hmm. for music uh, and uh, people really follow all the drummers from the United States. So you have to be there, you have to be close to the artists to give a better service. Yeah. Uh, so we opened our own place uh, in Los Angeles to do the distribution from there direct to the shops and to be closer to the artists. And in during this time, more and more legendary and high-profile drummers uh, joined the company like uh, Cindy Blackman, Santana, Idris Muhammad, James Getson, Lenny White, Mike Clark, Joy Warrenker. These are the names that joined the company. And today we have about 150 uh, endorsees wow. in the States. Wow. Yeah, yeah and, and they're not just joining because they like the way they look. They like the way they sound. They're beautiful yeah. uh, in addition to that. Yeah. so um... That's very important for us. You know, We really want a player, a drummer... Whoever he or she is, he should really like the sound of our symbols because yeah. that makes more uh, uh, special when they come to the family because they love the symbols, they love the sound. Yeah. I would imagine that you guys have a lot of employees who have been with the company for a very long time. Like it just yeah. seems like that kind of a, a place where people want to work and they stay right. there. And yeah. You know, it's, it's not easy for people who, for, for people to learn. Uh, in a short time how to make symbols and when they learn they stay with us because we do our best to create the best possible environment for our workers and they as I can see as we all see they enjoy being here and working making symbols because they also understand that this is a brand from Turkey which all around the world people like and follow you know yeah yeah absolutely Cool. So then, yeah. so now we're into the modern day now. So, so this is like yes. 2004 in the 2000s. Everything's uh, everything's going great. Any, anything from there? Right. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, by then the manufacturing uh, place, the factory was a little bit smaller for the upcoming demands uh, because the demand was uh, getting bigger. So in 2007, uh, we moved the factory. Uh, from kind of city center to the little bit edge of, I mean, outskirts of Istanbul to a bigger factory and uh, bigger machineries, uh, but still continue to do hand handmade symbols, of course. Yes. 
Um, and in 2007, we moved and we had a bigger manufacturing factory and a bigger warehouse. And today, uh, in our shelves, we always have like 10,000 symbols ready to be shipped. So this was a big step, uh, you know, to meet the needs of the music industry. Yeah. So this That's was awesome. 2007. And when we come three years later than that, in 2010, it was a very, very important year because it was the 30th year of 30th anniversary of the company. So we released our 30th anniversary symbols as an expression of our ongoing commitment to traditional symbol making. And these symbols were so much liked uh, by the people and we, we wanted to make them a little bit limited but then we decided to change that idea. They are still uh, in the market. Oh, that's funny. Ten, yeah. ten years later, the yeah. If yeah. people like them, why, why, uh, you know, why keep it, keep it to yourself and, and just exactly. So those became a exactly. part of your 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 everyday line. That's awesome. Right. Cool. So now another very important date is coming. It's two thousand. Actually, in two thousand nine, we created another symbol series called exist um, this is very important because uh, as i told you before people always knew that istanbul symbols only made jazz symbols so we wanted to change this idea and add another kind of series after the alchemy line because alchemy was handmade too just a polished brilliant finish yeah but the exist series in this series we wanted to do these symbols uh, in in a preformed way. What I mean by preformed is we perform the symbol uh, after the casting and everything. Uh, we just uh, on on a mold, symbol mold, we press and then we make the hammering on the symbol. Hmm. So because of that, it's a, it's a more affordable in price, but still have a great sounding. Yeah. But uh, had a more modern approach more modern uh, look and more modern sounds to some other uh, modern players you know in the yeah. industry sure and these series are very popular right now uh, in 2013 uh, we released this exist series with a redesign redesigned logo employing a perfect balance of technology and tradition to put genuine musical instruments within the reach of players everywhere yeah, they're they're beautiful. I've seen these a lot on um, online. Yeah. So so it's the pressed metal versus the hand hammered and all of that stuff. And um, and we can go through it. But I, I have a few questions too. Once once we get done with Please. the actual history of of maybe you can tell people. So you always hear hand hammered versus like let's say non hand hammered or pressed. So with the process of hand hammering, like if you get one of your like absolute top of the line. Um, completely hand hammered hand handmade symbols um that is is machine is that basically it doesn't get used in like like a machine isn't involved at all in the hammering any of that it's completely made by hand from start to finish is that correct or maybe you can tell us just you know mm -hmm. overview what is the process of of hand okay making one of your like top of the line symbols that that's a great question actually uh because we really want people to know and understand what is a handmade symbol means. Uh, actually, when you say handmade symbols, definitely you still use some machinery, but sure. the machinery doesn't affect the sound of the, on the symbol. So when you do the casting, when you when you mix the elements like uh, eighty percent copper and twenty percent tin, you get a you get a disc we call blank. Uh, bronze disc, we call it blank, and after you roll it under the rolling machine and put it into the oven like 8 to 12 times, according to the, depending on the size of the symbol, you get a uh, bigger, like, kind of a pizza dough. You uh -huh. make the metal rounder and bigger. And under, after this uh, process, if you just press it by the machine on a symbol mold, that means you already gave the symbol profile by the machine and you didn't add complexity. You didn't add a hand touch on the symbol. So every symbol that you make in this way 
is going to sound the same mm -hmm. because uh, they are all made by the machine. So the handmade symbol means after you do the casting and the oven and the rolling machine, when you have this round and wobbly surfaced metal, when you put the bell on the, on the symbol by a press, of course, yep. then you send it to the hammering. So this wobbly surface, all each symbol has a different uh, wobbly surfaces. So in order to give a symbol profile, a decent profile, uh, the, the hand hammer masters, they, they hammer a symbol, hammer the symbol. Let's say in a 20 inch ride, there's four to 5,000 hammer beats, hammer hits. Mm -hmm. This, uh, you have to hammer it uh, in that quantity just to give the symbol profile. And because all the symbol uh, wobbly surfaces are different, you maybe hit some part of the symbol with a force and the other part of the symbol with another force. That's why the hand hammered symbols have a more versatile, more complex and rich sounds in them. Yeah. Because you manually give the profile. So it is very important to give the profile by hand hammering. This is called the handmade symbol. Got it. But when you use the uh, pressing mold, all the symbols are going to be same and uh, going to sound same. Which, if you do those, then then those well, there's nothing wrong with that, obviously. But then those can be sold for less expensive, and those are what I guess yeah, of course. are typically your your less expensive symbol lines. Um, and also, I imagine exactly. that, that the machines and the the press molds and all of the molds that you're using, it's not like in some you see in some American factories, like a bunch of robotic arms moving around, just mass producing things. I imagine it's still. It, it's not like this completely automated system, even with the machinery. Like, <laughs> it's probably still, yeah. you know, not completely it's robotic and all that stuff. Definitely. I mean, it's not like uh, doing some cars, you know. Exactly, <laughs> still, exactly. Some human force, still, uh, it needs human to touch the symbol to do some something. But if, because we are very professional on handmade symbols, because this is our heritage, we want to want people to understand if you really want to have a symbol, play a symbol that exactly sounds like the way you want and nobody else has it, yeah. that has to be done in our way. It yeah. has to be done by the hand hammering, by hand handmade symbol hand symbol making process. Sure. So this is important for uh, our heritage. Let me follow that up with asking you um, kind of a broad question. Why is Turkey so special with symbol making? And I don't know if it, it's because of that, that just happened to be where it, you know, the Zildjian's 400 years ago or whatever kind of kicked it all off. But what makes Turkish symbols so like, why is it so sought after? And why is it mainly in Turkey? I know there's Chinese symbols as well, but um, yeah. yeah, what's the, what's so special about it? I think uh, you already told it because Zildjian had started in the Turkish land back then. It was the Ottoman Empire, yeah. And uh, this Armenian family, uh, by the way, I'm Armenian too. Okay. And my my bosses, uh, Agop sons, are Armenian too. Just information. Yep. Um, this family started this business by just doing, uh, as far as we know, some church bells and some symbols for the Ottoman army. Because the Ottoman army, when they marched, they used the symbols to uh, scare the enemies, you know. Yeah. So it just started in this uh, manner. And then uh, because of the music, jazz music and then the rock and roll music in the States, it demanded big bands and it demanded drums and then cymbals. Uh, and they had to do some cymbals. People... Uh, especially the old K factory in in Turkey, they also made more sim more and more symbols every day. So after that, Agop continued this heritage, and he made symbols. Uh, by the way, if Agop didn't continue making handmade symbols, probably most probably today nobody would have done done that. Yeah. You know, because everybody in Turkey, the other companies, uh, are people who learned from him or who learned from the people who learned from Agop again. Yeah. So there, there were these people who learned from him and then they opened their own workshops and the mm. others learned from them and they opened their workshops. It became really a, 
uh, heritage from Turkey and everybody were speaking, okay, the Turkish symbols are the best, you know, because it all started here and it continued to be the real handmade symbols from here. So that made, I think, Istanbul, Turkey very famous for the symbol manufacturing. I, I love how there's just like this this timeline that just starts obviously back with the Zildjians, but then like these two people split off and these people split yeah. off and so many companies have come off from that. It's just fascinating. I like that, that it's kind of like a thing where you can't just go out and, um, and now things are changing with technology, but it's like uh, you can't really just start a, um, a symbol company yeah. if it's going to be handmade symbols. Uh, it seems like it's got, you have to have that, uh, that heritage. And yeah, it seems like there's a lot Seems like there's a lot of respect for each other. Obviously, the the, the feuding between the two uh, other companies is kind of famous, but um, seems like there's a lot of respect and love just for you know you you do your thing, especially with you guys with the two Istanbul companies. Mm -hmm. A lot of respect, which I, I think is really great. Oh yeah, thank you. So on the timeline there, we were up to like the 2010s. After 2010, uh, we did uh, re redesigning of the Exist series uh, with new logo, and then. Three years later, in 2016, we in our factory, we opened a special uh, research and development area, which is called Agop Atelier. Mm. Uh, we are trying new ideas for sounds, for symbols, and we try new prototypes. This is a special place for us to create new sounds to the symbol world, actually. And today, uh, we have in the Exist series, a new, mo new series called Exist Dry Dark which people choose uh, not only express them like symbols, but also sounds, because these symbols are really uh, are made in a way to create different sort of sound and uh, more personal, uh, more uh, complex sound for, mm. the, for the drummers. Cool. And today we have the most musical and diverse symbol lineup uh, anywhere, actually, supported by a roster of the most influential and compelling drummers of this generation. Yeah. And we are trying our best to carry this, this heritage. Totally. You guys have a very uh, uh, heavyweight, lot of big, big drummers on your uh, roster, which just, uh, again, goes to show that they, they love the sound and all that stuff. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, you guys are, and, and, and people probably already know this, but you can you can get them everywhere um, at all your symbol mm -hmm. shops and online and all that stuff. And and uh, I guess, so if you're going to buy one of these, it's probably good to go out to a shop and actually try it because if it's hand hammered, they're all going to be a little bit different, right? Man, you're so right. We always suggest to recommend the people that, uh, that want to buy our symbols just to go to a physical shop and try the symbol because uh, if you choose if you choose the symbols online you can't really find your own sound because yeah. you have to try it you have to really play it with a stick and then decide if you want to buy it or not yeah so we always recommend to go to the stores now we are in uh, approximately 50 55 countries uh, in distribu by distributions and a lot of shops all around the world mm. Yeah, and I think I said it before, but you're the international sales director, so you're the guy. Yeah. Uh, you're the guy spreading it around, which is uh, you're, you're doing a good job. Um, so not only me, we are a team here. Oh <laughs> we yeah, are a family, uh, and we are doing our best, you know, to spread the word out. That's awesome. Um, now, as we kind of get close to wrapping up here, um, and if mm -hmm. if if not, that's fine. But are there any cool like stories of like I remember doing the the Zildjian one, and it was like, oh, they tried to blow up the prime or the uh the the uh, sultan and they people were exploding in the uh factory is there any kind of neat you know stories from back in like um you know the 80s when the company started or anything like that there's one thing one story that i can i can share with you um before agop has had passed away he was working on a new symbol series and he took some notes uh, on his notebook in armenian language and uh, after he passed away, his two sons wanted to finish his own project uh, because his wife had this notebook they asked from her and he, she gave them. And they worked on uh, this new symbol series uh, 
by studying these ideas of Agop. And uh, after they finished it, uh, they did it, uh, and they, they gave their father's name to this symbol. It's called the Agop Signature Series hmm. with the green logo. Yeah. Uh, this was kind of uh, uh, to carry on his name, you know. Yeah. Uh, in, in the symbol world, so we this is one of the best-selling symbols also, and it's a, it's a great remembrance to our founder, Agop. Actually, that's great, awesome. Well, um, Cesar, I think I think that's a great coverage of, of the whole history. Things that I'm taking away from this are so. um, that it's cool to know sort of that they were working at the K factory, that, that Agop was at the K factory, because that has its own whole mm-hmm. history of a lot of people don't know that the, the Zildjians were in America and there was a K factory running there. So it's just yeah. all these little branches off of uh, kind of the original, you know, core group of symbol makers. Um so I really like that. I didn't know they started in um, 1980. I thought it might have been earlier, but it's like, well, if they were working at the K factory, then he had he yeah. had he had to start. He wanted to keep it going. Um, yeah, they, they were actually working for that factory, so they were in the business. But officially founding the company was 1979. Okay, and changing the name to Istanbul is 1980. Wow. Man, that's yeah. an ex- exciting time. Um, and then the the music then is completely changing. It's not, I mean, you're not, it's not as much just like big band and jazz music. It's in, in the 80s, things were changing big time. Yeah, exactly. And there we maybe, it was a great time for Agop uh, to open the factory back then because the music is ch- was changing and it helped for the company to get well known worldwide. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, if people want to check out the symbols, which they should, and look at the artist roster, and there's a little mm-hmm. kind of history on there, you can go to istanbulsymbols.com. That's I-S-T-A-N-B-U-L symbols.com. Um, and there's tons of good stuff there. And uh, go out and go to a shop and play them. I think that's that's the key thing to yeah. this, too, is, is they're all different. That's very important. Yeah, we we are also on social media, Facebook and Instagram. So we are posting a lot of stuff. People cool. can learn and see our artist roster products information. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, I'm excited to go out to uh, to my shop here, which is called Badges Drum Shop here in Cincinnati, and, and I'll be playing them and uh, and and Great. try and find something. So Cesar, I really appreciate you coming on the show, and this is a nice uh, kind of concise episode where we can just. I, I like how you're prepared with the dates and everything. This was this was perfect. So thank you for coming thank on you. and uh, enjoy your your evening in in in, uh, in Turkey. And I will enjoy my my morning here in yeah. Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah, great. Thank you. It's been a pleasure for me to do it with you, Bart. Uh, thank you for this opportunity again. Awesome. And, uh, let's talk soon. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sure I'll see you at one okay, of the drum man. shows. All right. Bye bye. Yeah. Great. Hey guys, I hope you liked this episode. Um, I wanted to take a quick second here at the end to give a big thank you to some new friends I've made at Artom. They uh, sent me kind of a care package that included uh, moon gels, both the classic blue and then the clear ones, which are really cool, um, which I use all the time on snares and toms. And uh, I'm actually going to try them on the bottoms of cymbals, which is a cool little trick. Um, They also sent the uh, Moon Gel workout pad, which um, I'm not sure if you've tried it. It's just basically like that Moon Gel kind of uh, squishy material, and it's awesome. It really, really helps you practice um, with with a kind of more dead surface that isn't so bouncy, so you can really hone in on what you're doing. And if you can can sound good and get rolls going on there, then you know you're doing something right. Um, But something that's really cool is I got the black holes, which are mesh pads that you can just extremely easily snap on to your uh, existing drum set and they just they have some tone to them and I think they said that they bring the volume down by 80 percent so you actually still hear a little bit of the tone of the drum Um, and I got them because I have a baby and practice time has uh, become very hard to uh, come by so I got them I set them up and I was actually talking to someone on Instagram kind of uh, through the messenger because I was posting pictures and I was like uh, he was asking how I liked them, and I was like, "Well, man, they're they're really cool, from what I can tell. I'm about to actually start practicing, and I'm not going to tell my wife, and uh, see if it wakes her up with the baby, because um, I was down in the basement and the first floor, and then they were on the second floor, 
Um, so I was setting them up. I'm like, okay, I got to go get my sticks. They were upstairs on another set that I have. Um, and it's kind of funny cause I walked up kind of quiet, trying to not wake anyone up. And I grabbed my stick bag and I'm like walking back towards the basement. And then my stick bag, I didn't realize was completely open. So I am walking and every pair of sticks I own falls out on the kitchen floor, which is incredibly loud. Uh, and of course, then I get a text saying, what the hell was that? <laughs> and uh, that woke him up. But fast forward like a half hour, everyone's back asleep. And, um, and I was playing and there was nothing. Could not hear anything. And I don't have like a particularly quiet house. Um, so it worked perfectly. I put the workout pad on a cymbal stand kind of to my right because I don't have low volume cymbals yet. And um, it worked out perfectly. So I highly recommend them, um, all the Artom products. I use the workout pad probably every day. Um, I'd like to use it more, you know, for, for, for an hour or two every day, but I probably use it about 10 minutes every day. And it's really helping me out. I'm using, uh, I'm going through stick control and just hitting all of the different uh, stick control exercises on the workout pad. And I love it. So huge shout out to Artom. Um, you can go check them out at artom.com and, uh, and pick up some stuff for yourself. If you like this podcast, find me on social media at Drum History and please share, rate, and leave a review. And let me know topics that you would like to learn about in the future. Until next time, keep on learning. This is a Gwyn Sound Podcast.